on 11th of October 2020, Suraj Kumar was awarded life sentence for murder, poisoning, destruction of evidence and attempt to murder. In 2018, when Suraj and Uttara got married, everyone hoped for the beginning of a happy new chapter. Few months into the marriage, everything went haywire. This is the story of a husband, wife and a snake. Hello everyone and thank you so much for tuning in. For today's episode, I have for you the story of Uttara, an infamous murder case from Kerala. So sit back. This story is definitely going to make you question humanity. I'm your host Amla and you're listening to Crime Time Podcast. Born in Kollam district of Kerala, Uttara was the second child of Mani Meghlai and Vijay Senan. Uttara had been struggling with mental health issues since a very young age. And so, she was taken care of with a lot of love by her family. When she turned 23, they decided to get her married. And so, they found her a man. Since talking about mental health is still a taboo, Uttara's parents were open about her struggles to the groom's side to make sure that there would be no trouble for her in the future. Since they were acceptable and considerate about it, in March of 2018, Uttara got married to Suraj S. Kumar. Uttara's parents sent her with a lot of gold, 5 lakh rupees and a car to his family, not as a dowry but for her to use if and when need comes. Few months into the marriage, Suraj started fighting with Uttara about money. Uttara's parents gave whatever they owned to Suraj. But Suraj's demand only kept getting higher. The family then started sending 8,000 rupees to him every month. Soon after a year, Uttara gave birth to their first child. But even then, Suraj did not stop torturing and fighting about money. When Uttara's parents said that they had nothing more left to give him, Suraj started planning his wife's murder. In a report that I read, it stated that since he understood that he can't make more money using Uttara, he wanted to get married to someone else, but realized that he will have to give away all the money and property back to them, and so it would be better if he killed her and then got married. By now, Suraj had acquired over 100 sovereigns of gold, a car, 3-acre rubber plantation land and the 8,000 rupees check that he had been given every month. The plan that Suraj came up with to kill his wife was one of a kind. In May of 2020, Uttara was found unconscious in her bedroom by her parents. The family rushed her to the hospital, but she had already passed away. The reports confirmed that she was bitten by a venomous snake hours before she died. It was declared as a natural death and funeral was conducted. But it was when Vava Suresh, a famous snake handler from Kerala, spoke about it and had his own doubts that the officials started the investigation. When he heard about the incident the first time, it wasn't taken seriously then. But when it happened the second time, he sent his team and made calls to everyone he knew near Uttara's house to get more details. He then called Venu Gopal, a neighbor to whom later he said with confidence that this was a planned murder. The FIR was registered by the family. Vava Suresh also gave his assistance to the rapid resource team and other police officials. An investigation team was set up, a team led by Officer S. Hari Shankar and his team. I am now going to take you back to late 2019. In the internet search history of Suraj, it was seen that he had been researching a lot about snakes. He constantly watched videos on how to handle venomous snakes. After a lot of research, in February of 2020, Suraj bought a Russell's Viper from Chavarakavu Suresh, a snake handler for 10,000 rupees. He kept the snake in a plastic jar. 
The next day, he released it near the staircase of his house and sent his wife to get his phone from upstairs and expected the snake to bite her. But Uttara saw the snake and raised an alarm. This was his first failed attempt, but he did not give up and again tried to kill her in March. Suraj mixed sedatives in her food to make her fall asleep. After Uttara fell asleep, Suraj released the snake and forcefully made it bite her. After doing so, he threw the snake out of the window to destroy evidence. When she woke up, she was complaining about excruciating pain, but instead of taking her to the hospital, he gave her painkillers and made her sleep. It was only when she fell unconscious she was taken to the hospital. Suraj adamantly kept telling her family that she must have been bitten while she was washing clothes outside. But after she gained consciousness and was asked about the incident, she said that she does not remember being bitten and that she had not stepped out of the house that day. This was the first time Uttara's parents felt suspicious. She was discharged after 52 days in the hospital and was brought to her parents' house. On May 6, after 15 days of discharge, Uttara was still bedridden. This day, Suraj tried again. This time, he had got another snake from Suresh, a cobra, to use as his weapon. He kept the snake starving for few days before he used the snake to attack her. He again spiked her food and when she was asleep, he released the snake. But when the snake did not bite her, he grabbed the snake and forcefully made it bite her on her arm twice. He then left the snake in the room. The next day, she was found unconscious by her parents and she was declared dead. The interesting part of the story is the investigation and how they proved Suraj guilty. The few facts that led to the conclusion that it was planned and not a natural death was both the houses where she was bitten was investigated. In Suraj's house, she was bitten by the viper in the first floor. The Russell's viper rarely climbs trees and they bite the prey when they are on ground. Vava Suresh also claims that most of the snake bites cases we hear are always happened in the outdoors. The Russell's viper rarely climbs trees and they bite the prey when they are on the ground. Bhava Suresh also claims that most of the snake bite cases we hear always happen in the outdoors. And therefore, in this case, someone should have released the snake to the first floor. But Suraj kept arguing that it had come through the window, but it was too hard to buy that. In the second instance, the room where Uttara was lying had windows that were at the height of 150 cm. But the cobra can only lift up to one third of its length. The cobra that was used was 150 cm and it could only lift up to 50 cm. So, how did the cobra come inside her room was the question raised. In order to prove this in court, a dummy experiment was conducted. There is a scientific study conducted by National Center for Biotechnology Information that studied the distance in the puncture wounds created by the snakes. In the case of cobras of 180 cm long, it is up to 2 cm apart. But in Uttara's case, it was 2.5 and 2.8 cm by a 150 cm long snake. Even a 6 feet cobra cannot make a wound of more than 2 cm. The increase in the distance can only be explained as someone forcefully holding the snake's head and making it bite. This expands the skull, making a bigger wound. The police recorded the difference it creates when the snake naturally bites and when it is forced to by getting a dummy hand and provoking the snake to bite and one where it forced to. To make sure it was the same snake Suraj had bought that bit Uttara, they conducted a post-mortem on the dead snake used by him. The venom of the snake and the venom found in Uttara's body matched. Suraj's family was also questioned. His father Surendran was held as the gold ornaments Uttara's parents had sent with Uttara was missing. 
After hours of questioning, the ornaments were found hidden in a plastic cover and buried near the Suraj's rubber plantation land. By now, there were far too many evidences against Suraj now. Baba Suresh stood as a witness who did his own investigation at Uthara's house to confirm how the snake could have not gotten inside by itself. Then there was the internet research history that was found on Suraj's phone and laptop. Even in the blood sample that was collected from Uthara's body showed that she was sedated using citrazine. These were now enough evidences to prove Suraj guilty. I also read in one of the reports that after this case, the criminology syllabus now has a topic called homicidal snake bite that explains about the use of snake for murders. And the entire investigation and how to go about it is included in that portion. Surendran, Suraj's father, was arrested on charges of destroying evidence and hiding 38 sovereign of gold jewelry. But he was given bail and was released. Suraj confessed after five days of interrogation. The Kollam Additional Sessions Court, presided by Justice Manoj M., pronounced its verdict on October 11th. Suraj was convicted under four sections 302, punishment for murder. 307 attempt to murder 328 causing hurt by means of poison with intent to commit an offense and 201 causing disappearance of evidence of the offense he was awarded 17 years of imprisonment for first murder attempt and life sentence for the murder of uttara the story of uttara is one among the other thousands of stories about dowry death in india in 2020, 7,000 dowry deaths were reported. Well, these are the ones we know about. There are so many that go unreported. Make sure to check out our Instagram page, Crime Time Podcast and follow us. I'll be back with a new episode very soon.